So, setup of the game, unlike some games, has a significant amount of choice. To begin with, and some variants um, beyond the choice, everybody gets six, and this is in the uh, full game, the referendum, the later ver scenario. Everybody gets six of these issues, and that's recorded here. I've also recorded the number of constituencies they have, sorted out the pieces earlier. Uh, one issue goes here in the uh, crisis zone, uncontrolled. And these issues remain secret as long as they're covered by a piece. You can't look through a stack to see what's there, <clears throat> which is of some importance, actually. Uh, now, the decision of where to put things is kind of an interesting choice, and we'll see the different factions with their different starting setup uh, have different capabilities that they want to put into play about their pieces. So you've got kind of the question of, okay, do you want your constituents sitting on top of your important issues, or do you want your constituents available to grab new issues? Um, if you don't have your constituents there, do you want the issues exposed on the control point, or do you want a piece on top of them uh, which covers up what they are, gives them additional protection, the issue itself I believe has a defensive strength of one, uh, gives them additional protection in combat, but could also get sucked into the crisis zone and locked there. Uh, in addition, the civil servants have only a movement point value of one, so for the Federalist at least, he's got a bunch of civil servants. Does he want to use them as defensive pieces over here? They're not very good on attack, unlike uh, special interests with their five movement rate. They can sort of charge wherever they like. Where do you want your pieces? Uh, you only have so much grassroots control spaces, so you have to put constituents here if you want uh, otherwise. Remember, there's advantages to having pieces in the grassroots, one, for protecting constituencies and any issues they're stacked with. One reason you don't want to stack the two together, um, they get a bonus to prevent them from changing sides, but also, the deeper in the grassroots section, say back here, this can only be attacked if the enemy's in your grassroots section, which gives you a huge defensive bonus. So your most important issues, you want to tuck back where they can't get taken from you. On the other hand, the issues that aren't important to you may be the ones that are important to other players. One thing I didn't explain in the rules, I'm sure there are a lot of things, I was muddling my way through, is trading issues. The way you trade an issue is you carry it with a constituent. You drop it off in an empty space. <laughs> That's not a control point. This is weird because you're allowed to walk through enemy pieces and enemy control points. You could drop it on those spaces and it should convert, but no, you're not allowed to. I find this actually one of the things that I, I kind of like to change in the game which may be why I kind of blurred it, blurred it from my memory there, is I kind of like to say, hey, you just walk to a control space, drop it there, it's in the other person's control now. Because this issue sitting alone, not on a control space, not under a constituent, is kind of problematic. It still has to be attacked by anyone except the person you agreed to trade it with. It causes difficulty for me in the solo play, especially because I like to wander away from the game. So I may just break that role in general. Anyway, uh, now comes the hard part of deciding where to put things, and then everybody gets some cards, which is determined by the scenario itself. All right, I want to look a little bit at setup here um, and what I chose to do. So I'm dealing out the cards. Uh, first of all, we have one thing in the in the crisis on the media element. I mentioned that before. I've set up this little chart. I haven't figured out how to track sort of in my mind where all the pieces are. When you're playing this uh, in a four-player game or a three-player game, it's fairly easy to keep track of what you have. But when you're playing it solo multiplayer, well, there's no other way in this. Um, 
you have to keep track of what everybody owns to be able to make decisions quickly. Otherwise, you're pawing through your pieces continuously. And, well, here what I'm doing is I'm listing what they need and then putting little dots for what they own and then writing it in pencil what they don't need that they have. So, for example, Red has two education issues they don't need, which is important for trade. In terms of the actual setup, different philosophies for different people, and they have different... Uh, kinds of pieces at the beginning of the game. So those philosophies are affected by their actual pieces. So for example, protecting this education piece, I can't really protect it from the crisis zone the way I've got it, but I've got the three surrounding areas held with things that I want with fair strength on them. So for example, a constituent owning it and then a civil servant to protect it. Red has the bonus of this pile of civil servants and they also have interest groups. Although not as many as some, but they have a couple of uh, interest groups spread about throughout. Plus, they have a decent number of premiers, well, a couple, and then they have the prime minister. Um, so, I have a lot of power that I put here next to the crisis zone, always with a constituent stacked with it so that I can grab issues that show up there, but I could also, if pieces are in there with the issues, you can only attack if there's an issue stacked with the pieces. So pieces that get affected in the crisis zone, yet lose their issue that they're stacked with, uh, or get unstacked with it somehow, end up kind of in a safe zone there, but that's not terribly useful to have them in there. Um, anyway, I've managed to make this space unattackable until an attack's made against one of these three spaces, for whatever that's worth. Uh, because it can still be called in with the crisis zone fairly easily and be pretty much undefended. Uh, over, let's see if anybody's got anything more interesting. Sort of a clump here, where I've protected everything with a constituent, but only a constituent, because I don't have a lot of powerful pieces for the, for the uh, separatists. Um, over here you've got loose special interests stuck to an issue because green has a lot of special interests at the beginning of the game, but not a lot of constituents. Just, you know, you have to kind of play it by, what, by the hand that you're dealt at the beginning of the game. Of hands you're dealt, let's take a look at some of the cards that people have. So, couple of crises. I'm going to start off with red. I traditionally do that. In the game, you're supposed to just randomize it, but I always like starting up here in this corner, the way the map's set up, because the way this face is, <laughs> that's always my upper left corner. And I kind of justify it with, hey, they've got the government, you know, let them start things, whatever that means. Um, so they've got a couple of crises, language and territory. Uh, they need language. They need another territory, so they may well play both of those at the beginning of their turn. But other things are a little more complicated. So this lobbying scandal. All interest peace groups move directly to their grassroots section. So if you're under attack from someone who has a lot of interest groups, this could be a really useful thing to get their pieces out of your territory. Uh, it could also be a way to get your pieces out of someone else's territory, but the problem with that is... Uh, if they are with constituents with issues, they're not going to have a very easy, you know, they're not going to, they're going to weaken the constituents with issues. But sometimes you end up with a pile of um, uh, interest groups in other people's territory for some reason. And this is a quick way to get them home where you can then use them. It's more useful in a defensive position. Elections in Alberta. Well, in this case, I have to look and see, well, how many people are in Alberta to begin with? There's only three people in Alberta. Now, I have one of those three. What's my chance of getting more? I probably don't want to play this until I'm no longer sort of in the position for Alberta. But here's the thing. I don't have the premier. Now, this is only really terribly helpful at the beginning of the game, except for getting the count of how many people there are there. Otherwise, I have to look and see how many I actually have. And that's a, a, a tough thing to figure out sometimes, because you're looking and you're like, oh, where do I have them here? Do I have them here? Is he stacked? You know, are people stacked with 
I, I did this at the beginning, stacking people with their constituents, the premiers, but that's not always going to be the case. Uh, there's no requirement for that. It just happens to make more sense because if there's an election, that may shake up, you know, your control of the piece. And unstacking means that sometimes you'll end up with pieces not in the most defensible position because of that. Uh, if I remember correctly, there's certain people you can't change the mind of. Maybe I'm wrong about this. Uh, I'm wondering if you can change the prime minister and the premiers. I'm going to have to look that up because I seem to remember some pieces don't shift. Premiers and prime ministers can only be contested through an election, which is kind of interesting. There aren't going to be any cards that change them, but more importantly, if they're uh, involved in a, a political fight, they're not going to shift their own belief in the core type of system that they want to stand for here. Is that reasonable? Uh, there should be some opportunity for it. Certainly you see that in American politics where someone gets converted um, from one sort of camp to another over a period of time or maybe all at once when you know one of the legislative bodies flips completely and it's clear that yeah i got no chance i'm going to be permanently in the minority for the rest of my career so i think i'll switch sides um but and and some who feel that you know their party has left them or whatever I think this is, that's a fairly rare occurrence though in American politics and probably equally so, maybe even more so in a parliamentary system. Uh, so I guess it's reasonable to say, let's not worry about that because certainly they're not going to shift with every debate. Uh, the contests that happen are essentially debating that uh, is going on, every issue that's discussed in the news, etc. Generally, they stay pretty solid on one side and saying it'll switch with an election probably is not too far. Uh, if someone does switch, they might switch right after an election or something. <laughs> so let's take a look at Red's uh, turn to begin with. And this media, is something that they desire. In fact, they need two of them. There's another one here. Very interesting. What I'm looking at is launching an attack to get this and maybe to pick this one up. If that's going to be the it, I'm not going to be able to get this one this turn, but I can put pressure on orange. Um, if that's going to be the case, I probably don't want to play too much here. The language I need so I might want to play that, but eh, in territory I need. But I'd rather call things into the crisis zone later um, when maybe, you know, it, I look scarier. Because at this point, I think I can launch an attack without it being too big a deal. So I want to get a good odds on this. In order to do that, I just, three to one is the best I can get, which is essentially something like this. Um, here, we're looking at a three strength point piece. If I'm gonna put pressure here, first of all, chances are I'm gonna be in the legislative session at the least. Cause I gotta get at least two to one, right? Well. in terms of spaces. So the problem with that is that starts increasing the risk on me to launch that attack. If I do a one-to-one, -one, eh, I have a slight advantage. If I go to two-to-one, remember that shifts it so it doesn't get any better. So an attack on that space doesn't seem very valuable, but an attack on this, and I can't look to see what's under it, but I know it's an issue. Uh, so therefore I have, there's two strength points there. If I could attack that, I could hit it with two spaces, but there would be 
a plus three to the die roll. I'm sorry, a, a legislative is going to be plus two. It's tough to take things from someone in the grassroots section. Uh, and that's why, of course, everybody's defending there. So if I went for a three to one there, which I could get, two stacks of three could attack this, at plus three, on a four or higher, I lose my pieces. And I'd only succeed on a one or two. That doesn't seem worthwhile. Hmm. So I think this is not the time to attack into orange. <laughs> uh, attacking where a premier is isn't terribly helpful. So, okay, I guess I'm going to have to call things in. Uh, let's do a crisis in territory. And at this point, everybody has to look. Oh, when do I draw? I draw first, political opportunity. I'm sorry, I get more cards. Uh, two cards. Okay, let's see what we get here. We got elections in Quebec, which isn't bad because we don't have a lot of Quebec, and a crisis in finance and banking, which we also need. Now the problem, of course, is these cards, if I play them now, I won't have them later, obviously. Which means if somebody else plays cards, they can pull my stuff into play. Um, let's play one to begin with. Territory and language. Language is more common than other things. I'm going to play the language one. And now I have to find all the language cards, and this is where it gets difficult. So green has two, and each of the others have one. And now I hunt them down. And these get revealed. Now here's the thing, you kind of want to attack your allies or your closest political people because they're more likely to come into where you are. Uh, so, <sighs> I'm going to go after this and put this one into the zone. Okay, that means... Theoretically, that issue is, is still controlled, even though it's in the crisis zone. I think that may not be counting it as controlled for the election table, though, which is the only thing that you really care about for them. Uh, so I'll, I'll have to look that up. But right now, we'll leave it there until that issue comes up. So now I've got one that I want to get that I can get with a stack, a three stack. One that I want to get that I'm going to need a six stack for. I can go for one more in these hide. I could go for one more issue if I saw it open. Is there an open territory or finance and banking? No, so I'm gonna hold on that. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna assign uh, this to attack the media and these two to attack this. Let's do the media first. I was thinking about this funny thing about dice. I pick different dice for different games. In this one, there's no question that I, but that I have to use the Avalon Hill dice, the old ones for this. I'm not sure why. Obviously, it came with SPI dice, but I never used them for this. The, in some games, I use the rounded dice. Who knows? Okay, so going for the media, I was going to attack it from this. That gives me a three. Now, I could launch an attack over here on blue. But attacking blue doesn't really help me. I'm not going to convert them all the way to red. So it's better not to make an enemy there. It's better to say, hey, we're kind of peaceful. We're just too far away to really be able to sway one another. Okay. Um, so three to one, no mods. Nothing bad can happen. 
Not that there's anywhere to go to. So this goes one. I've just picked up this media issue. I get another issue here and I mark something there. Now, remind me. Now this other one, I have three, six, seven to two. That's again, three to one. There's not gonna be any modifications. I get a one, which is very good. That's gonna be, it converts by two. So the first thing is the language issue comes into my hands and I'm gonna put that a little deeper into my territory so that orange can't just attack it back. I get a dot there and I get an eighth issue. But now this converted two colors. So orange is going two towards me. That's gonna get rid of one there and I'm, Two towards me only means it converted. I'm only one space away. So that's all that could actually happen. Now I could throw an election in Quebec. Now the problem with that, looking at the starting position is, I'm not gonna gain anything from an election in Quebec. Blue might lose stuff, but I'd rather hold this until maybe some of the Quebecois end up over in the orange player's turn. So that's the end of my turn. Move into Orange's turn. This game kind of highlights something, at least in my mind, about my play of multiplayer game Solitaire. Uh, <coughs> the diplomatic side of this. There's tremendous opportunity, supposedly, for trade in this game. However, I almost never see it in my solo games uh, because there's a clear path to get what you need without making deals. Any deal you make is gonna help someone else too. Now, unlike say civilization or settlers of Catan, where it's clearly to your advantage to trade, where you can't win without trading, here a trade kind of makes you a target in a sense. You're doing better now and it's not absolutely clear that trading is the best way to get towards things. And unfortunately, my mindset in that, and if I was playing uh, opposed, I probably would walk in with the same kind of mindset, is a reluctance to make those trades. Whereas I think if I sat down with a bunch of people, there would be a couple of people perhaps uh, who were interested in trading. Now, when I did play it opposed, and I've only played it once or twice opposed, there wasn't much trading, but that may be more my description of the game uh, that influenced that rather than if you sat and read the rules and walked to it yourself you might come up with these oh yeah i'll help you because and it also may have had to do with the players involved i know with things like uh, spies up here i tend not to cut deals and trade as well but i've seen other players do so and i think that's something that i kind of miss out of it because I'm so focused on trying to achieve my conditions through extreme the, the, the means of debate rather than cutting deals. Now, in some sense, you kind of it's not clear that there's a, a tremendous value to trade, and that's one of the issues that I have here. So, you trade to get. Uh, an acquisition of something. You, you you make some deal where, yeah, okay, if you drop something off on me, first of all, I have to remember it from round to round, right? Uh, but you make this deal, you drop something off for me, I'll do something good for you, great. Uh, but then where, you know, you're not walking away with an obvious positive there. You may temporarily have an issue which someone can take from you fairly easily. Anyway, I'll move on with orange. Let's see, all interest group pieces move directly to grassroots. That's not terribly valuable. I've got elections in Alberta. Now I had a look, I got a pile of elections. This is, there's basically one elections card for each province. Prince Edward Island, Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, and New Brunswick. The problem here is these are all things that Orange is good at. Alberta is the only one where maybe I want to have that election. The problem there, of course, is it's better to be on the edges, I think, with an election than to be in the middle. 
at least if you're kind of even. So I'm not terribly interested in pushing that. I lost an Ontario, so if I had one for that, I might be interested. I got two crisis in language. Hmm. You know what I forgot to do? That Ontario was sitting on a language piece, wasn't it? That I didn't mark off. And this is why it's hard for me. So I should be down and no longer have that. Yeah, I marked uh, the issue, but I didn't mark the lost one here. And now does red have seven, two, three, four? I should be at eight there, yeah. Okay. Um, when I'm not going to be on camera, it's going to be easier perhaps for me to remember that, but it's always going to be difficult. And that's why I say I don't know how to keep the, the track of what I own and what I don't very well. <laughs> uh, I actually have trouble even, even solo, so, or even playing opposed games. I could use a language. There's no question there. Is there anything nearby that I could attack? I could attack this space here, which I know has a language and this one has a media. They're kind of close to me. I know the strength of this. This is four. I could get six against it, but I can't get eight. I'm not allowed to attack this because it doesn't have an issue. You're only allowed to attack things in there that have an issue. Oh, I think the best I can do is throw a crisis in language. And that's going to push this in here. And that's now a strength of four. And I have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen to four. That gives me my three to one. No penalties. And I'll make a quick roll for that. And I get a conversion of one. Now, what's cool there is I'm getting not just the Ontarians, but I'm also getting these civil servants converted. They can convert, and I get the issue that I can pull out. And I'll take care of that bookkeeping. And I don't think there's anything else Orange is doing this turn. Okay, and we've got the changes in the pieces here, and hopefully I've got everything reflected right on my, both on the charts and on my little table here. Um, now you see, people are getting more and more cards. I, that's just this scenario. Uh, red starts out with just two opportunity cards. Uh, blue starts out with five. They increase going towards there. A uh, couple of things of interest here. Elections in Ontario. That's useful to green because green starts out with very little in Ontario compared to everyone else. So he's probably going to play that, which is cool, because then you get to see an election in process. Uh, and then this media blitz. This is an interesting card. I don't want to play it right away, but it, it doubles the combat uh, contest strength of all interest groups for the current player turn. Um, green has a decent number of these. This is the kind of card you can use to help you know, make a lot of attacks at once. Unfortunately, I've got my interest groups back here, largely, so I may want to send them out on a little mission uh, someplace to try to take something. Unfortunately for me, some of the places where I, I might want to take something, like here, where there's an issue involved, well, it's kind of hard to get there, but also when you take something from the crisis zone, unless you're making a lot of attacks in one turn, usually you're taking them within your administrative sector. So there's going to be a penalty to the die roll. And also they're usually going to be on a stack that's not just a one strength point stack, at least early in the game. Later in the game, somebody might become weak. And weak players are easier to pick on, obviously. <laughs> and they become targets throughout the game. It becomes harder and harder for them to recover because their personal weakness as a party means that you can seize their issues. And that's the one reason why you sort of get this mood in the game of wanting to create a national emergency uh, because you just feel like you're being isolated and sent off into into some segment. And unfortunately, 
uh, what should happen if you fail to create a national emergency is you should lose the game and the game should then continue, right? <laughs> because with you no longer having a turn, essentially, you've been knocked out of the political arena, but other, and the way the game is set up, that doesn't happen. So normally what you'll see happen is somebody who's losing may well want to create a national emergency for various reasons, some of them game-wise, some of them historically reasonable, right? If you are a group that has become so isolated and disconnected from the mainstream of the politics, well, your fundamental goals and desires may have changed from trying to work within the system to trying to go to more radical means. Uh, and of course, you may simply not succeed. It's the crazy guy on the street shouting, we must have a revolution. Well, that may be all your faction is anymore. <laughs> all right. Um, I'll try to figure out what I want to do with Green and report on Green had an interesting choice. They put the tax issue up in crisis. They could have taken one from Orange, who's doing better than Blue. Orange wants a tax issue and Green and Blue does not. That's another reason to maybe target Orange rather than Blue. But the orange one was sitting on an Ontario constituency, and I've got the election that I'm ready to play for that. The blue one was sitting on Alberta, so I grabbed the blue one instead. Orange is kind of saying, ah, that was nice of you, you know, um, knowing that he wants that. But now it's time to play an election, and unfortunately, Ontario is the big one. Let's take a look at what we have. We have 10, 14 Ontario constituents, and I'm going to have to reveal all of them, and then we'll roll the dice for them. I'll come back once I've uh, flipped them all up. Things with the cards that you hold, if you hold an election in a particular constituency, you know there's only one card for that election, I think. So, yes, I think there are some events that allow you to steal a card, but not many. What that means is you're pretty safe from elections as long as you hold that control. Uh, I feel like the election cards should be more controlled by the premier to tell you the truth or time-based. It doesn't feel right the way they actually are handled in the game. Anyway, let's uh, move on to the election and see how this works. Now I'm gonna basically be moving across the board with the election and then go to the crisis zone last or something like that. This is kind of tricky though. So over here, I'm in a legislative area, or I'm sorry, grassroots area in the election. Um, I look up how many issues he has. He has seven issues. Now, that means I have a minus three to the die roll. So to move it all, I'm gonna need to roll a five or a six. And that one does not move. Same with this one. And this one. And then here it's going to be a four, five, or six. Three, four, five, or six. <laughs> okay, we've got a shift there. I'm going to hold off on that because that holds an issue and this all happens simultaneously. This one's shifting. And then over here, let's do it color by uh, zone by zone. The Ontario in the crisis zone has a plus one on it, which means it's very likely. That's going to actually shift two colors. Okay, let's see if which way this goes. Odd it goes towards red, even it goes towards blue. I don't know what the... Yeah, that's actually how they state it. I got lucky there. And I've pulled the Premier off. He's going to show up on top of a constituent for whoever has the most at the end of this. Okay. Odd, it goes towards red, so that's not an issue. These guys only shifted one. Let's take the guy closest to me and the other one, and I've gotten odds for all of them. So red lost no Ontario um, constituents. And what's, you know, he's going to keep his Premier then but we'll keep going through the rest of the colors and I'll show you what happens at the end. Here comes kind of the mechanical complexity I had to update um, 
So an orange turned red here in Ontario. Uh, a green turned orange and took an issue with him, so I had to update the issues. Uh, a blue turned green, so the issues got updated there. The net effect is orange got another issue. They should be at seven. Yeah, according to my numbering. Um, and I think I've got the constituents numbered right. Now, this is going to be a tough haul for these guys to get out of the home areas that they're in. And this is one of the issues. When you throw an election and people are over in the grassroots section, they're not going to make it out very easily, especially if they're deep in the sections. But green had some hope of gaining things here. Blue had a problem with they had only five issues, so they were rolling on this slightly worse chart, uh, more likely to shift two spaces. That's not really in green's favor, though, so it didn't really help much there. But they, deep in the legislature, in the grassroots, it wasn't an issue. Red is going to get the premier, and I'm going to just drop him back here. I don't want him in the crisis zone, um, and this seems the most valuable location. Although actually back here might be kind of cool because the premiers have a good movement allowance of four in there. And that is the end of the green turn. And I think we've seen most of the mechanisms in the play, but I'll continue with the blue turn before I look. I'm wrong about uh, there being only one of each election card. That's clearly not the case. Maybe there's only one national election, but I have another Ontario card here. Manitoba, uh, Manitoba and Saskatchewan, and then one that does both of them. <laughs> Powerful combination. The only crisis I have in tax doesn't really help me for blue. Blue doesn't have an interest in a tax issue. They may want to play it just to throw something into the crisis zone, af especially for an election. More issues is powerful. Uh, it's worth taking issues that you can't even use, largely for the, hey, it improves your chances of holding on to what you have in elections. Now, I have some Ontario holdings. I want to get this back. Um, I also may want to throw an election in Ontario. Conceivably. I'm not terribly interested in an election in Quebec because I hold the vast majority, well, maybe not too vast, but yeah, pretty, pretty big, majority of the uh, Quebec constituency. So that's kind of a powerful thing. The problem with elections is they're run right after your turn. So in a way, elections are something that are very helpful if you were to make bargaining um, because you could play them for the, uh, to the advantage of the next player in order uh, who gets a chance to run away from the effects of the election and take advantage of the attack on them. So like green is not going to get this piece. This piece is going to fall to blue because they played an election on their turn that may have helped them. Um, anyway, orange may get this further out. He's going to have trouble though, because it is so deep in. Getting out of the grassroots section is really tough. Anyway, if I had some kind of deal in play here, maybe for a trade or something, I might be able to get the constituency totals necessary in order to call something into uh, play. So for example, if I did the tax crisis for red, but red doesn't care about taxes, I could maybe get an agreement with red because we have 13 and 8 is 21 constituencies, whereas there's only 17 on the green-orange combined. We might be able to come to some sort of agreement of, okay, how about we call something in? Now, alternatively, I could probably convince Red, and I'll do it, I'll make a roll to see if I can. Um, hey, let me call something in I want, and then on your turn, we'll call something in 
you want. Let's see if they're willing to do that. Nah, not quite. Maybe it's just not coming to mind, you know. Uh, but Red's not willing to do that at this point yet. Um, or maybe Blue's not willing to do it because Red is winning right now, which is why, of course, they can uh, do it. Could I come up with some kind of alliance? Hey, let's pick Red's government apart. Hmm. That would be harder. Orange was willing to go with it, but Green was not willing to stand up to that agreement. Blue was interested in making the agreement. So we'll just continue playing for a little while in this kind of balanced scenario. One problem though is this game does maintain the balance for a long time. So without an alliance, it may not end. <laughs> but once one starts being formed, big changes take place. It's kind of like diplomacy, right? If you don't make alliances in diplomacy, the game's just going to kind of freeze there while people can can hold their positions. It's hard to get a real grasp on someone else's throat. Well, that's like that here. But players are unwilling to make that commitment at this point. Uh, perhaps because I'm not convinced it's that simple. I think the cards may shake things up enough. All right, well, if I can't call anything into the crisis zone, what can I do? I can certainly attack this, which I care about. Don't I finance and It's pretty deep, so I probably do. Finance and banking. Yes, I do care about that one. Um, can I launch an attack somewhere else? I could get two pieces into place here. One, two, three. Mm, I couldn't get another... Uh, Okay, so I could get four, five, six, seven strength points, and it looks like I'm facing two, three, four. I can't even get two to one. That doesn't seem like good odds. Basically, you need a lot of spaces. So what I'm looking at, why I counted what I did, is I can get um, a constituent and the premier, and then two of these special interest pieces into play against him. That's the best I can do. And that doesn't look very good. Uh, I could probably manage an attack on red, but there's nothing to gain from that. Um, maybe I could create an attack on Alberta here in, in, and specifically just target that. Uh, that would be at a minus one for me to get two spaces against it. Seems a little tricky. What about against a three strength point unit? Defended by the Premier here. What could I possibly launch against that from just one space of mine? Well, uh, I could get a one to one attack, which is to my advantage. But all I'd be risking, all I'd be getting, gaining is the Alberta constituency because I can't take the Premier from it. And I'd be risking however many strength points I committed, and I couldn't commit my premiere. I'd have to move around to do that. So it kind of looks like there's not a lot I want to do except attacking Ontario here. Let's get some pieces moving down there. I've got one, two to two. That's one to one. That's not very good. And I'm having trouble getting more strength into play. I can't have two issues in the same place, so I can't really you know, I could drop this off and move another constituency down there and maybe the same elsewhere. So I could do one, two, three as an example and this guy one, two, three and then I'd have two to one which is better but that weakens uh, what I have on the board, you know, it, it weakens the defenses of those issues, which are probably important to me. It's just a problematic issue in terms of where I'm going to move things. I think I'll do that. And then cover them. Launch an attack at two to one which is somewhat better. I only have a one in six chance of failing that. Well, I didn't fail, but I didn't succeed either. 
and now I'll take care of uh, these elections. I think they're taking one card at a time, essentially. Since I'm interested in both Manitoba and Saskatchewan, I'm going to play just the single double card at this and run the election there, and I'll come back after that's hand. And the movement largely went in the wrong direction for Blue here. The only reason this was a worthwhile election to play, other than sort of the, hey, it doesn't hurt me. Well, it doesn't hurt me may not be a good enough reason. The reason is, hey, I had two more cards, so if they move towards me, then I could actually get them. Or maybe we would see a two-point move, but we didn't see a move in the right direction. Saskatchewan, uh, I think, is split between orange and red now. The orange one moved red, the green one moved orange, and Manitoba stayed orange, and I think they've got both uh, the constituencies for that. So net, it looks to me like orange gained a constituency. I'm never sure if I have things right number-wise. 15, 23, that doesn't sound right. 36 does not sound right to me at all. <sighs> But, you know, it, it's just a pain in the ass. You're going to have to count and recount in this game all the time if you want to get the numbers right uh, because the tracks end up screwed up too easily. So, unfortunately, I don't have a total count here. I seem to remember it being higher than that. 10, 14, 24, 27, 29, 30, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39. That should put it so that it's 20 and 19 for the splits. So 15, 20 and 19 should be 39. That's 13, 21, uh, 29. I'm behind a couple, so I've got to recount everything. Crap. <laughs> so it looks to me like orange. I just failed to move it forward for a couple of these. I didn't bother counting the blue and green. Once I got a number, I could accept them good. Uh, you know, uh, that's like with things like dominant species, the counting in this game can become a horrendous uh, task if you're not keeping these up to date. Now, you have the tools to keep them up to date on the board, but I'm horrendously bad at anything that involves that kind of counting when I'm doing it solo, when I'm doing it with people even. It's quite often somebody forgot to move something or whatever, and it's just almost always there's issues with this game due to that. Anyway, that's one round through. Uh, not a lot's moved. When we see, well, red, they're going to be getting their pieces out of the crisis zone and taking their next action to do something. Likewise, and I didn't want to do an Ontario election, I guess. I don't know. Um, hoarding cards is useful. You can look weak on the board, but have a lot of power in secret. And that's kind of the thing. I don't have a lot to gain for an Ontario election. Ontario has been moving uh, towards, I guess, the... Federalists, what are they? Are they leftists, rightists? I don't know. They're probably leftists, but again, that same issue as before. Um, where was I? Yeah, you know, not, not a lot uh, moves. You've got this constant flow as events or elections shift things into people's hands, they start flowing back to where they're more defensible. One problem, though, is there's very little defense against an election. Basically, if you look at this chart, if I'm green or orange, I lose something on a two or higher. Even with a minus three to the die roll, I've got a pretty decent chance of losing elections, even when I'm over here in the grassroots section. And if I've got pieces out in someone else's territory, boy, they're going to fall in an election. There's almost a guarantee. Now, if I'm red or blue, I have the possibility of people moving further in my direction. So 50% of failed election rolls end up being no harm to me. But for the centrists, it is a, a real issue where they have to make sure that they've got their pieces in, in their home areas. Um, all right, I'll load this one up and continue onward. <laughs> 